names and values, TRS. I'm basically using the same Sharingan format. And since we are all talking about this, so, and this is about object versus name. I'm not going to repeat what we saw in the book. I'm not going to reread it. Um, Alex, yes. Sorry, Alex wants to be in the meeting. I'm going to allow him. Alexander, Ran, and Katrisa, admit all. Okay. I'm not going to repeat what we are seeing, what we were seeing in the meeting. I'm just going to go to the presentation, what we did and where it is. I think we should record this if you can. I'm trying yeah. to record it. I'm not ensuring any quality about this. Okay. All right. This is not a, this is not Emily's meeting. I tried to email her, couldn't. So we're just going to go through the whole thing, through the whole meeting. As we saw on the book, it's got names, values, and it has quizzes, and it has both diagrams. Are you seeing my screen? Are you seeing the book? Yes. Uh, no, we are seeing a presentation. Ah, okay. I want to share the thing. I wanted to share this. Okay. So the book has code, quizzes, an outline, resources, and these nice graphs that indicate what exactly the bindings and the, th the things are. We all read that. I'm going to go back to screen sharing and share the presentation. So why do we want to do object versus names? So we can predict performance, do faster code, and understand functional programming. If you went to the book and you read about that, you will see that they're talking about not only because what it is, uh, but how are functions internally and how is it that you can get data and you can reach data without doing English values. You can go data and this is the quiz I was going to. You can read data, manipulate it, do manipulation on lists and some vectors without incurring penalties on memory. And if, do you all do the quiz? Was it easy? I mean, the postdocs and computing science don't, please don't. Type. <laughs> yeah, would you agree it was easy? Basically, you generate a, risk, a list of three random numbers and you see the data frame it creates, then you generate 1 million random numbers and create a list of these 3 million random numbers and see the memory they occur. Um, how much memory does it use? And it goes later. It will tell you later what it does. Also, it tells you to install the new package, Lobster. Hmm. Ah, yes. And we have to get there. These are the three points, syntactic and non-syntactic one, which are both historic, have for historical reasons, and is available for non-syntactic because you will eventually download things that are not what you expected. You work with external data and the external data might have names that are not what are allowed in R. So binding, your binding, you're putting, identifies two different concepts. One is the name of the object, the other is the object itself, and they sit in different places. You can have many pointers pointing to the object, many pointers pointing to the object. You can have A, B, and C pointing to the same thing. This, that same thing is, only, is there only once, so you don't incur any memory penalties of that. As these bindings, as these names of the object change, or you change other names, then you will do a copy. Mm, the name is appointed to location memory. We can have many names. We can have A, B, and C pointing to the house. The house is the same. Names are all different. Lobster. Apparently, the, the base functions for addresses and si object size are not good. So we have lobster, object address, and object address will show you the space in memory. Am I going too fast, assuming everything is fine? Yes? No? 
you guys don't care they're like yeah this is okay fine. this is great okay um yeah because i know that the audience is already versed on this i'm like okay fine whatever um so the name, the same name points to an object. The object resides in a place in memory or has a unique identifier. Object address from Lobster is the one that's giving us the address in memory. And since it's the same object we're referencing, we keep the same address, two difference. Non-syntactic names, I find it most interesting for the backticks, do not use the quotes, but the backticks because it points to something that might have been downloaded from external data. If you're downloading things from anywhere, Stata, SAS, and the web, some scraping that you're doing, you will find if or underscore anything. If you're downloading things from SurveyMonkey, you will get this eventually. The underscore starting the column. So it's interesting to know that. Exercises. Who did the exercises? I didn't. I went to this. Okay, you yeah, sorry. Um, what is the relationship between A, B, and C? A, A points to one to ten, but also remember this is going to show up at the end. This doesn't use as much memory as we think. B points the same thing as A. C points to the same thing as A, and might this be a different one? I, I guess this is a different one. Um, I didn't do did this one. Who did this one? Torian, would you like to explain? <laughs> I mean, they're pointing to the same thing. I cannot hear you. It's my fault. You are all on mute, but I cannot hear you. No, I can't hear her either. Okay, so it's not me. It's not me, it's you. Are you muted? Now you are. You are all muted. You, you're, you should be fine. I don't know. Hello. Okay, there we go. Um, they all have the same address. Okay. And there is um, a solution for yeah. everything. I didn't read the solutions. I read quiz answers and that's about it. Um, why will converting non-syntactic names to syntactic ones might be a problem because you lose or you repeat or you lose, you get more addresses than you had before. So what rules to make names into syntactic ones, the backtick, we talked about that. Why is dot one, two, three, E one? Because it starts with a dot. So we can use the backtick in that. Um, copy on modify. Anybody messages? I have you this here. Objects are immutable, but as always, there are exceptions, and they will be explained in 2.5. That means that we do copy and modify only when we need them. So when we have one object and we are copying many times and we are doing transfer data transformation, we see always that we are copying the same thing. We only modify that when we have to do a transformation on that one, meaning that we are all pointing to the same object all the time, even though we have different settings. Uh, if we go into this thing, copy and modify, both pointers, both pointer, both names point to the same object, same thing. And I think this applies to functions as well. There was a mention later on about that. Trace memory will allow you to get into um, the location of the object and follow the object that is it's copied. Trace memory also will allow you to follow a function as it's copied and assigned to other places. Anybody has a comment? No, nope. okay. If there's only one binding, I mean, it's only one cop, one name and one object, it happens modifying place. Why would you wait to 
copy all the things, but you can just copy the one. But if you have many objects pointing to many bindings, they will be modified in place. You will only evaluate it when you need it. Function calls, same role supply. It points to the same object. You can trace it with trace mem. So function calls. You define a function, you define a function in the place, you modify the function, there is no memory to trace. So, And this nice little diagram, the computer scientist, could you please point me to what is the name of this diagram and how do you describe it? Roberto, you... you <laughs> I, I, I probably... I studied those at some point, but I don't. I don't remember to be honest. I know, for example, the little thing to the right that looks like a bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually, I remember using those for linked lists. So you have the dot, the black dot there, is usually um, to refer to an address, and then then you have the contents of that thing. But I probably kind of explained the whole uh, diagram thing. I know that X is pointing to an object and function A is modifying, it's pointing to that object as well. The function A identifies this A point to this object, but I don't know this, uh, the, the, the syntactical and grammatical rules of that. So like I'm staying away from it. I like lists and I cannot lie because lists are a nice combination of pointers. You change the value, you change, but the pointer can remain the same. You assign one name to the list and the list can become whatever you want. So I like lists in that regard. Mm. You can also keep trace of all your lists. And the list will come now as well when we deal with data frames because data frames are pointers to the columns. It's a list of pointers to the columns. So you modify one column, but the pointer remains. Or you have a data frame made of many columns. You only have, you keep the same column you only have the pointer only changes if you modify the character, anything in the, not yet, not yet, not yet. It only changes if you're modifying any row on the data frame. So this is very powerful. And if you're doing crazy manipulations, Stevao, you were out, what happened? Um, if you're doing any manipulations on the data frames, I won't go that far because you guys, probably have done projects already with this and you I don't monkey patch the data frames I just let them be character vectors are interesting as well because they are pointers to the global pool so you don't have to go around trying to fish to create more memory to use more memory using your strings you just find all your strings in this global pool the pointers all regard this if you change a string you change the pointer and that is great what is trace mean one to 10 not useful? Oh, why? Because you have one object here. There, uh, where, did it go? where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Mm -hmm. Data frames. This is horrible. Object size, not yet. Okay. One of these days I'll learn how to make presentations. That's why they kick me out of so many schools. Tracement one to 10 is not one object, it's a list, it's one to 10. And if I recall correctly, is the beginning object, ending object, and one indication that it's just all that. So it's, it's everywhere. Mm. Following objects, one to 10 is a list, it's a list of lists and is the same list repeated three times. Anything else? What happens when you run this code? List one to 10. So you got a list made of elements from one to 10 and you assign the same list to another, to one element of the list. You have one list pointer pointing to itself. Draw a picture. I don't draw pictures. Um, let's do that. Who has this? Okay. 
Okay. So. So the second element is the list is the is the list itself. And we already know X is a list. And the elements are all pointing to themselves. Okay. Object size. We cannot use base functions, we have to use lobster. And the characters are easy because they share the screen pool, as I mentioned earlier. So not this one. Okay, so this is what I was saying. The objects are easy because you are not never referencing the whole object. You are only referencing the object in the pool. Also, if you're talking about lists over here, you reference the first object and then another element pointing to the list itself. So that's why also if you have an object of X amount of sites and you repeat it many times, you have only pointers to that same object. You don't have a big same object. Um, and where we're talking about alternate representation, alternative representation, in which the queues, for example, when one goes to X amount, it becomes simply the first element, last element, and the rest is just an indication that of the sequence. So all the elements are the same size. Console the documentation of object size. Uh, should we do that? You guys are quiet. Object size reports the space allocated for an object, but we know that that's not exactly the correct one and it has issues. And I don't think I can get very far with that one. So, which are we sharing? Okay. What is the list misleading? Because they all point into the same function. Uh, break the output to the following code. We are running uh, this one, we already run. Object list is a list of two elements and they're pointing to the same one. Um, object size B is pointing to just one element. plus a character uh, object size A is pointing A and B. It's just pointing two pointers. Modify in place whenever objects with a single binding, if there's only one binding, only one name, only one object, it modifies immediately because it doesn't have to wait to update all the things. And environments in which when you're modifying something then you have so you have to be careful of what you're modifying i'm just running through this thing and again we have one environment the list the elements are pointing to other pointers and these are the pointers that form the environment we have the environment is fixed but we don't they they are pointing to something else so even if we change one of those the external ones that define the environment the Environment is defined by the same thing, they don't change. Mm. Reference A goes to itself. I don't know. Explain why the following code doesn't create a circular list. Okay, this was beyond me. So 
if anybody has an, um, an idea, an answer, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Okay. And this ends with the unbinding and the garbage collector. You remove the binding and remove the binding with RM. You delete that, but the object is still there. The garbage collector will arrive if you invoke it. Or when R determines that the system needs more memory for more objects or for other things that it has to do. So main use will be a rubber for GC. I will tell you how much memory is used, but no need to call it unless it's necessary. So this was the easy you see, can only be you can use it to know how much memory or when you want to return memory. That's it. This part it was easy. This was a very easy, <laughs> um, very basic one. The rest are yours, and they are going to be more complicated. Mm. Any comments? Uh, yes, but. That, that question which uh, you said you struggled on is exercise 2.5.3. Yes. Uh, why the following code doesn't create a circular list? Yes, x pointing to x itself. Yeah. I feel like I know why that is, but I can't articulate it. I think it's... Um, so x is initially being assigned the em an empty list, list with uh, two uh, parentheses, there's nothing in it. So when you assign x, square bracket, square bracket one, to x, which is just the empty list, you're just creating a list of empty lists. I think that's why it's not circular. I think it goes, it should also go back to the We could do the tracing of this. We can find what is it. Right. Yeah. Sure. The reference. I'm looking for the reference, not the trace for the map. But... Let's look for the address of that thing, object address. So, okay, come on, I loaded this. I loaded this earlier. Let's try again. Poster. So we have a list. Two five three. We want to see what happens. Anybody else? Can you try to uh, do address of element one in X? So just just the same command, but put uh, uh, double square brackets and then number one, just to see what's the address. Yes, sorry. That's the one you got 
uh -huh. at the very beginning. Yes. And I think is something what Alex, yeah, I said okay. that it's the way uh, lists work, that when you do a list of a list, you're just composing like a list within a list. Because then if you keep running right, yeah. uh, the X uh, one equals to X, then it just goes inside like adding indexes to the, to the list. Oh, which I have always found weird how lists work that you can have a bunch of indexes, indices in, inside. When they do themselves. Mm. Okay. So that was good. Okay. Anything else that we should look at? I think this is one of the easy, I think this is one of the easy chapters because it's just names and values. So most of you have that. I don't, because I'm an economist. So yeah. Um, but yes, any comment, any idea? I just want to make a note. Uh, when the book says that you should always try to stick to the ASCII uh, character, like A through Z, those characters and not use accent marks and stuff like that. Uh, and so I sent to the chat a command I found recently that will allow you to convert uh, like characters that have accent marks, like backwards accent, forward accent, like the little hat thing, two dots. Because then uh, when you're working with data that it's been generated somewhere else, like a different country, you will find those accents. Okay. And it can be painful to like try to deal with those if you are making files and then you're trying to share that code with someone else that has a different language in their computers. So it's just something that will be handy, believe oh, me. <laughs> that is very important, especially because eventually the first stage when you're cleaning the data and the form will kill everything and yeah. yeah. And you'll find a lot of those, how would that act with, um, because not only you have now something beyond ASCII, but also you have Unicode and you have emojis and other languages. Uh, just puts everything I'm into not, ASCII. I'm not sure about emojis, but certainly, uh, for example, a, and I can send it in the chat. If you have like an A with an accent, uh, where's that? Mm -hmm. I don't know where I did. So it will convert that to a. into, to yeah, a. to A, but it will do like a single quote. So single quote A, because that is the equivalent. And so I'm sending it to the chat. <laughs> so it makes more sense. So that A will be transformed into something like that. Okay. Because I, I was oh. asking about the emojis because we were doing a scraping uh, and it was a huge amount of data and the cleaning became impossible because we found out that people were answering with emojis. So whichever analysis we had to do, we had to discard all the lines that had emojis and do an automatic thing. Four hours later, trying to see it had finished or if it was correct in any way. So. Let me try it with emoji and see uh, how it works. Because it'll be interesting. I guess in emoji is actually just some code, so it's a number. No. Yeah, some some modern, like really modern programming languages can you can write emojis directly into the source code. And so you can use emojis as variable names. I think UTF eight has a uh, code for emoji now. And there's a list, but um, for example, this one, it's But yeah, it becomes. Yeah, 
I tried with the smiley face and it returned in mm. NA. NA. So I, because ASCII doesn't have an Yeah, emoji. so I guess can you, you change the second parameter to yeah. uh, Unicode or a different yeah. one sec. Ooh, it says you un support the Unicode. Let me see what the options are. One second. Wow. Okay. Yeah, with UTF eight it works. So oh, let me send in the chat. This works. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so it prints a smiley face in the R console. <laughs> mm. It might and doesn't. It might just print a number actually. No? No, no, mine doesn't either. Does some weird. I guess that depends on your language or your computer. I don't know. Or your R studio configuration. It's my fault. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, I'm, I am copying the. Okay, but I come. That, that's what we. To check then things later. Hmm. Can we assign it to the list and one? Yeah. Can you show your R Studio? Showing my R Studio. One hmm. second, please. I don't have an answer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you see this? Oh, look at that. Yeah. But I copied this smiley face. I'm copying one smiley face that I found somewhere else. Uh, the Unicode smiley face. Let's see. Wow, sorry. Um, it's a good thing we're here. So there is something called emoji code, which seems to be a programming language which is made of emojis. If anyone is interested. <laughs> Are you just playing? Yep. No. No, it does not take it. Oh, you go. Anything that is slightly related to what we should be doing, <laughs> I feel like playing hooky around here. <laughs> May I share my screen? Yes, please. How do you share your screen? Uh, I think I can do it from here. Oh, yeah, you, you have you, to enable us. Yeah. You have to allow us. I've managed to uh, to name my variable an emoji, a smiley face. <laughs> Okay, you are being made co-host. Now you are sharing your screen. Please don't bump us. <laughs> It'd be so bad, I mean, seriously. <laughs> okay. Can you see, uh, so I think on the left I've got you guys. I can see a black screen. Oh, black screen, that's not very good. Uh, you should see our studio now. Yep. Yeah. So if we create a variable, oops. <laughs> so let's say uh, y is equal to two. And then if we want to add a name to that y variable, you normally would do names. So there's no name at the moment. But if we name y, uh, let's say it's uh, our name. When we print out y, it comes up with a name. Yeah, but using the icon function, you can change the name of Y 
to I can't, let me scroll up just so I get it right. You can icon and then paste in that to UTF-8. And then when we now print Y, it names, names the variable smiley face. So I don't know if what the, um, the encoding settings are on my computer, but um, R doesn't seem to mind. Being uh, being happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It also was really so many horrible things, though. Oh, but that yeah. I mean, imagine having yeah <laughs> emojis in your in your data in your data. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, and okay. If you scrap Twitter, for example, that was my my example. If you start scrapping Twitter, all kinds of things come up. You get or, loads of junk. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, how would you select an emoji? I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you have uh, your, your screen back. Thank you. Um, on the case that we were working, we had so much data, we were able to throw away things. And not every, um, less than 1% of people were using emojis, so it was easy. It was like, yeah, okay, it doesn't matter. But now that, that was a longish time ago, nowadays more people will be using emojis more people will be communicating with gifts that's yeah a thing so i don't know about those so maybe you can convert them to, into like the unicode or the utf8 uh, code and have like a lookup table and they say everything that matches with this just that's drop it remove it and we can assign some sort of um sentiment Management based on I mean, whether it looks happy or not. Like yeah, you can actually do it because you know, like the emoji what they express, and I guess with the emojis you can actually tell more than because like it's eh, eh. it's very much like hieroglyphics is vague enough that you can say hieroglyphics like yeah. or not. Um, also, it depends on your platform because I was looking at the code for emojis and. If I don't, I cannot share anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, you were to. Is it supposed to be a standard? I think there's some organization that standardizes them. Uh, the National Emoji Organization. Yep. No. Nope. Okay. On the chat, I just sent the page that has the all the emojis, and Twitter has one, Android has one, Symbola. Apple to native. So there are ones that look uh, like an emoji and there are other ones that look like a grimace. Native goes happy and Twitter becomes ugh, not quite so. And, and so on. And then it gets more complicated. So yes, you could do sentiment analysis, but then you will run into so many other things. And so many issues with that. I was sharing my screen. I don't know what I'm sharing now. This is the one. So if you look at emoticons, 1F601 to 1F64F, this is happy, but this found a worm. It is male, something. And people have complained about that. So yeah. And it's purely designed. So. but also it allows itself to be vague. And one of the uses for communication that we have seen is that people want to be intentionally be vague so they cannot be accused of anything. You said so, no, look at that. Uh, it was not me, not the system. But I don't think that really goes into what we're talking about. Um, anything else, anything else we should be doing? I don't know, but uh, that was uh, that was quite fun. Yeah. We can we can tell Emily everything went fine. Emily, it was perfectly fine. It was not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back like, "Why did you guys do it? nothing?" Um. Oh yeah, we played around um, with the emojis. 
Yes, we're like trying to find how much memory one GIF emoji combination will put. Um, one of the things that she did last time was ask who was going to do the next. Um... I think I signed up already. You you signed up for the number three. Okay, there you there you go. And the experts should sign up for the very difficult things, like function factories and all that. Yeah. And environments seven. Hmm. I sign up for an easy one and yeah, control statement. Hi, <laughs> please. Yeah. Now I would like to do uh, some in object oriented programming because they, they definitely intrigue me how they work. And, and so I probably will do one of those S3 or S4. Okay. But you saw the, um, the link that she sent for, that Emily had sent before for the Google page. Yeah, I, I just sent it to in the chat. Oh, okay. So. We've been trying to look at that and da da da, our studio, which I'm sending though. Oh no, that's how I made the presentation. That's not where I wanted to go. Yeah, so Torin, Alex, Roberto, okay. Plenty of space for everybody else to get into. I want to thank you. Thank you Camilo for presenting this week. And now what do we do? Everybody to the pub. Yes, you're too late. Hey. You're too late. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in Oxford right now, what? They're yeah, close already here. Yeah, yeah they, sorry, last call. Yeah. 10 to 11 already. So they close at 10. Really? Yeah. It's Monday, yeah. No, no, it's because. Um, That's from, Yeah. The, the pandemic. You know what's happening around the world. Everyone A little conquered. thing. I forgot about that. The thing why we're. My commute from work to here was five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that, one. that same thing. I had to drop one computer and open the other one. I didn't log out though. Oh, shoot. <laughs> That's bad. Thank you, Camilo. Okay. It was very fun. Yeah, nice to see y'all. Thank you. I'm recording. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Stay safe. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.